Hello, friends, and welcome to Escaping the Mouse. With your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got a little story to tell you. This story actually starts about 18 years and three days ago. It was a Saturday, and I was attending a get-together with some colleagues at work. When I arrived home afterwards, there was a message on my answering machine requesting that I call my mother. Apparently, my mother's mom had passed away after a brief illness that day. Uh, that meant, since this was a Saturday and her, her funeral was scheduled for the following Wednesday, that meant I was going to have to take an airplane trip. And since flying from California to Minnesota is kind of an all-day thing, that meant I was going to fly the following Tuesday. Now, I have a lot of family in Minnesota and flew there periodically to visit them. So there was sort of a routine to doing all this. Um, I would usually fly out of the same airport, John Wayne Airport in Santa Ana, usually fly the first flight that I could get out in the morning, and that would usually get me into the Minneapolis uh, St. Paul uh, Airport, you know, usually late afternoon or early evening, and then it was probably an hour or an hour and a half drive from Minneapolis to uh, a small community north of, um, of the Twin Cities called Bram, where my grandmother lived. So. Like I said, I, it was, it was the, the goal was to get out as early as possible so that I could get there at a reasonable time in the evening. So I scheduled in a, a, a flight for the first flight out on Tuesday morning uh, from America West. And basically there was a layover in Phoenix and then it went on to the Twin Cities. Now, one of the things you may not know uh, is that John Wayne Airport has kind of a little quirky thing they do. Since it's right on the ocean, and the airplanes take off over the ocean and there's kind of an affluent community right at the end of the runway called Newport Beach and the people in the, that community weren't a huge fan of having airplanes flying over their house when they were trying to sleep they passed an initiative to force John Wayne Airport to shut down at night so the airport was closed from basically 11 o'clock at night to 7 a.m. the next morning this meant that when the restrictions on flight were lifted in the morning Every airline at the airport wanted to be on the runway so that they could take off right at 7 o'clock when the flight restrictions were lifted. And so that meant that the airline I had chosen uh, was one of these airlines and they basically pushed away from the gate at 645. So that meant I needed to get up really, really early, hop on a super shuttle because we didn't have Lyft or Uber in those days, and get a ride to the airport and get checked in through security and into the terminal before that all happened. Everything went according to plan that morning, and when I got into the terminal, I noticed something odd right off the bat. One of the little uh, terminal uh, concession shops was a bar uh, right next to where I'd gone through security. And at about six o'clock in the morning, this bar was just packed with people, which struck me as really odd because like I said, the airport had been shut down for the last eight hours, so there'd been no flights coming in. There'd be no reason why there'd be a bunch of people that were just kind of hanging out in a bar and winding down after a long flight. These people were in there for some other reason. And then when I looked a little closer, I noticed that they weren't really doing what people usually do in a bar, which is, you know, socialize and have some adult beverages and just kind of enjoy themselves. In fact, they were all very quietly just kind of staring at the TV. So I decided to go in and see what was going on. Well, when I got in, the TV was on one of the news channels and they had a camera in lower Manhattan in New York and it was pointed at the World Trade Center towers. And when I got in there, one of the towers was on fire, uh, about two thirds of the way up and there was just f smoke and fire erupting out of this building. Now, nobody really knew what was going on at this point and uh, but some of the newscasters were kind of speculating that they'd heard reports that an airplane had hit the building. And at one point, I actually remember they zoomed way in on the building and there was definitely an airplane shaped hole in the side of the building. Now, I don't know how long I say, stayed there and watched, but uh, after a while, I noticed uh, another airplane kind of come in from the lower right hand corner of the uh, screen disappear behind the building that was on fire, appear briefly in the gap between the buildings, and then disappear behind the second building. A moment later, a fireball erupted out of the second building, and it became clear that that second plane had hit the second tower. Now, 
I always had a problem dealing with that level of evil and processing that in my mind. I was still convinced that this had to be some sort of a horrible mis mistake. In fact, I remember thinking to myself, geez, somebody needs to call the control towers and, and tell them to be more careful because they're flying planes into buildings. And, you know, at this point, you know, as I continued watching in horror like everyone else did, and it kind of slowly dawned on me that this wasn't an accident, that this was an act of terror. And uh, I continued watching for I don't know how long. And then all of a sudden I began hearing them call my flight. So I waited until they called my roll. I was kind of about halfway back on the plane. And when they called to board my row, I kind of quietly walked away from the bar, got into the airplane and sat down. Now, once again, it was obvious that something was going weird because normally what happens when you get on an airplane, there's a bunch of chaos because you got people putting stuff in the overhead bins, putting stuff under the seats, getting stuff out and preparing basically for a long flight. There was none of that this time. People very quietly shuffled into their plane, sat down in their seat and were very, very quiet. Uh, and I, I got to admit, I really understood how they felt because I was kind of the same way. I was shocked about what I had just witnessed. And I was also a little concerned because now I was going to get onto an airplane and fly and didn't really know what was going to go on. So I just kind of sat there quietly waiting for a while. And about the time we were scheduled to push away from the gate and roll out to the airport, the pilot got onto the PA and informed us that the FAA had shut down all air traffic in the United States and that this flight was now canceled and we were going to have to get off the plane. Uh, needless to say, I didn't make it to my grandmother's funeral and I was very upset about that. It was kind of disturbing for my family and all that, but everyone really understood and as sad for, as it was for me, I did go vi get to visit my grandmother's grave about a year later. Now, uh, in order to commemorate that, in order to keep that in my mind, I've actually kept a hold of the airline ticket stub that I have from that day. And I've kept that in my wallet every day, every day since then. Um, as we were coming up on the 18th anniversary of the September 11th uh, incident, I wanted to talk about that and kind of share that story with you. So yeah, there it is. There is my airline ticket. It's all kind of faded right now. And I don't even know if you can see it clearly on the camera, but yeah, it clearly shows uh, uh, the date was September 11th and it was a ticket from John Wayne to Phoenix, Arizona. So, like I said, I wanted to share that story with you because that's kind of a defining moment in my life. Um, I know that's a little sad, but you know what? We have to deal with the good and the bad that comes in our life. I hope this was uh, maybe not entertaining, but at least informative for you. I appreciate you as always watching, and thank you for watching me on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.